TLO, what's p- We are on kick, K-I-C-K dot com. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, This right here, this is the channel, you know. If you miss any of the live, and there's some highlights, you go check it out right here. Um, don't forget we got the Patreon. This is an updated list of everything that's on there. So this is up to date, this list right here. Um, and don't forget we got the Discord as well. Plays a vital role in Kick because, you know, you can't drop uh, links in the comments anymore. Got to throw it through here and then I'll go look at them. Pending 7, that's tough. Uh, also... You know, just dropped all some merch. Go check it out. You ain't got to purchase nothing, man. Just go, you know, give it a look. Uh, for the people who have purchased, I appreciate you. Uh, the link to all of this is down below in the description. It's called Link Tree. Click it, everything will pop up. One of the worst cases in UK history, David Fuller. Okay. Talk to me. This case takes place in the United Kingdom. On the night of the 22nd of June, 1987, a 25-year-old woman named Wendy Nell was spending the evening with her boyfriend, Ian. The couple was somewhat serious, but they did not yet live together. As the night ended, Ian dropped her off at home. They gave each other a kiss, said goodbye, and off Ian went. The next morning, Ian received a call from some of Wendy's colleagues. They were worried as Wendy had not made it into work and they were unable to contact her. Mm. Ian immediately made his way over to Wendy's home. Wendy must be a astute. She must have been like one time to work, never miss a day type person or call in and let people know what they're doing. That's, a, that's like, these are awesome, like good friends to have. The moment she late, the moment something off, they call her. But upon entering, he made a truly disturbing discovery. Someone had made their way into Wendy's home and killed her. Ian found his girlfriend lying naked, covered in blood. Wendy had been savagely beaten and strangled to death, and whoever had done this had forced themselves upon her as DNA evidence was found on her body. It seemed like someone had been watching Wendy, and when she went out with Ian, they took the opportunity to creep inside her home through a faulty window and wait for her to come back. On the blouse that Wendy was wearing, the police found a shoe print. The shoe print likely matched a Clark's sports track trainer. The person who killed her had also taken her diary, purse and key ring, most likely taken as a keepsake to remind them of this sickening crime. Five months later in- It's crazy that there's weirdos like out here in the world to do stuff like this. Like you can't even be a beautiful young lady in 2000, like in this world at all. Without having to worry about stuff like this. Like, it's crazy. In the UK, you can't even defend yourself either. It's like... In Tunbridge Wells, another horrifying crime occurred. At around midnight on the 24th of November, 1987, a 20-year-old woman named Caroline Pierce had just taken a taxi back to her home. She had been on a night out with her friends and was making her way inside as the taxi pulled away. Neighbors heard screams around the time she got home. They looked outside, but they couldn't see anything. The next day, Caroline never arrived at work. When her family and friends were unable to contact and locate her, panic ensued. Memories of the grim case of Wendy entered the public consciousness, with fears that a serial killer was now at large. The taxi driver was questioned, but it was clear that he played no part. He also said that he didn't see anybody suspiciously lurking around the area when he dropped her off. He claimed that he didn't even see anyone at all. Three weeks after Caroline had gone missing on the 15th of December, a farmer found her body decomposed Dang. in a drainage ditch, and it seemed like she had been there for some time. These murders would have become- Probably been there the night, the same night. For three weeks, they found it decomposed already. Known as the Bedsit Murders, and they were unsolved for decades. But in 1999, advances in forensic science allowed the investigators to get a full DNA profile of Wendy's killer. DNA that for the first time linked both murders forensically. The oh yeah, because, you know, because he, he forcefully forced himself upon them, right? 
Police found 1,000 names on a national DNA database, which could have belonged to relatives of the samples taken from the crime scene, and whittled this list down to 90 priority names. After voluntary samples had been taken from the list of 90, a relative of one of those people was found to have a near identical match. Having evaded justice for 33 years, the man responsible for these crimes was arrested on the 3rd of December 2020. So three years ago? Two years. They didn't even get that man a chance to reply. They ain't asking to come in or nothing. They was in, uh, we know it's you, buddy. He know what's up. He know what he did. Talking about. It ain't even bright in there. It ain't no more brighter than what you had it in there. This is what I'm going to say. Yes. Um, we're from Kent Police and we're investigating the murders of Wendy Nell and Caroline Pierce in 1987. Okay? As part of that investigation, you've been linked as a suspect, both geographically and forensically. Okay, if you listen to what my colleagues are going to say to you. Alright, David, you're under arrest on suspicion of the murders of Wendy Nell and Caroline Pierce in 1987. Bro didn't even blink. He just sitting there like, dang, they got me. understand. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. You are being arrested. To secure and preserve evidence by means of questioning. So we can conduct searches, so forensic samples can be obtained, and to prevent your disappearance. Do you understand? David Fuller. David was a 66 year old father of two who worked as an electrician at a hospital. Photographs that were taken in the 1980s were found in David's house. They showed him wearing the exact style of trainers that would have left behind the shoe print on Wendy's blouse. However, the full extent of the horrors of what this man did would soon come to light. Officers had no idea how to print. I feel like everybody probably had those shoes back in those time. Uh, but you know, it's all the stuff combined that's, that got him in there. If this individual actually was. David was questioned and his house was searched. There's some stuff stuck on the back of that one as well. I've got the body worn on it, literally as it's happened. Well, on the back of his oh. chest of drawers, it looks like he's got some hard drives in there, I would say. Oh. But they're stuck to the back oh. of the chest of drawers. So he was prepared for this day. Just in case, let me do this, this, and the third to try to hide it. Yeah, it's a sand disc one that I can read there. He admitted to the murders of the two women, but they also discovered that the pin number to his bank account was 1987, the year he had killed them both. After David's arrest, the police uncovered four hard drives with five terabytes of data storage in total attached to the back of a cupboard. These hard drives were well hidden, because on them were four million CP images, mostly downloaded from the internet. Of and what? I know what you're thinking, and no, it's not a mistake. Four million. They also found 818,000 images and 504 videos of David documenting himself having intercourse with 100 corpses. Some of the names of- Yo, what? Oh, wow. He's one of them. And these folders were labeled Necro Lord and the best yet. Necro Lord? Yet. He had even kept a secret diary where he documented his twisted crimes. He had been working for the NHS and he had used his swipe card to gain access to the hospital mortuaries. He would wait until the hospital staff had gone home. He would then creep inside these rooms, have intercourse with the bodies, and film himself. The victims included a nine year old girl, two. 
16 year olds and a 100 year old woman. In total, there were over 100 victims. After he was done, he- 100 victims? He then used the mortuary records to log their details into his own notebooks and then look up his victims on Facebook. David was arrested and charged with murder and violating corpses. How many years he get? This is what? This? This is top weirdo of the century. I've never seen, heard of something weirder in my life. It was always in the evenings, David. It was always evening time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Can you tell me what you've been doing? Talk, David. Can you try and explain it to me? Mm. I you find it hard. Yes. Thank you. Um, um, do you need help? No. Thank no. you. Okay. Yes. Um, We, we know that. I want to admit it. I am admitting the offences, but I don't really want to go into detail. Yeah. No. Okay. I do appreciate that. And what offences are you admitting, David? Yeah, at the end of the day, he, he did it. He's saying he did it. Like, I don't even think we really want to know the details. Like, that's nasty. Corpses, dead bodies? Unalived bodies? As you've just described to me. Okay. My bad, man. Hopefully I'm not over mumble mumbly sounding. Because uh, I got this mask on, man. I got a cut on my face. Pretty big cut. Uh, I find it disgusting. So therefore, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to put it on the internet. <laughs> In terms of the true penetration yep. of corpses. Okay. And do, you, do you know how many occasions, David? No. No. David lost count. No, David, I was asking where you put the hard drives, where, where you would have kept them. Can you, can you help me with where you kept them? You said it was in the office. Now you've got a desk of me in the office. Yeah? And you've got a wardrobe. You keep quite a lot of your clothes in the office, haven't you? Yeah? Quite a small room. Yes. Now we found some hard drives. There was like packaged to the back of a small chest of drawers. Does that help you? David? Yes. Yeah? Is, is that where you keep the hard drive? Yes. Okay. The second part. I feel like in this interrogation, he's like reliving every time he did it. Up to this, David, is the recording, isn't it? Of, of what's been happening. Okay? And we'll have to go through that in a little bit more detail, but just for now, David. All right? Just for now, all right? When, when that's been happening, okay? All right? Don't be embarrassed now, David. Don't be camera shy now. Have you been recording yourself doing those things? Like, so tell me in the comments, man, what y'all think, man? Is this like a mental thing? Or was he down bad so horrendously he never got no play that this is what he had? He got two kids, don't he? Recording yourself. He penetrating the corpses. I admit that, 
Yeah. Okay. What did you retain the recordings for? Little scratching his head. He can't believe himself. You can't believe yourself. We can't believe what's, what I'm hearing either. NHS, once again, somebody you're supposed to be trusting. He in there downstairs in the morgue after hours. I don't know. Going crazy. That's sad, man. What about the families of these victims, man? I hope ghosts are real. They come back and hunt that man. Was it? For virtual pleasure, David? Yeah, in, in the same way as somebody would keep. That's Captain Sussex Hospital. Yeah. Not the Time Shots Hospital, but Captain Sussex Hospital a couple of times, yeah. It okay. started then. So it started then? Oh. Okay. And. You say a couple of times. How, how many would you say? Not, not many. Sorry, not many. Not many. Not many. Okay. And <coughs> in terms of at the Kent and Sussex Hospital, um, were there any occasions other than at those hospitals? No. Okay. So it's always just been hospital setting. It's not been at any funeral parlours or no. anybody that you knew that had died or anything like that. Okay. Do you know why you started? No. Like how did, yeah, that's a good question. Do you know how you started? Like what clicked in your mind where you was like, yo, I got to I gotta have me some corpse. Some corpse box is crazy. Do you remember the first time? For the first time. David? Do you remember the first time? I'll get closer so y'all can hear me. Okay. Did you record who they were? Any, any details? So, are we cla we're classifying him as a pedo too, right? Because these these bodies are nine years old and on, on the hard drive. Did you did yes. you, oh, okay. Sorry. Did you record their names? Yes. Okay. Did you record their ages? Yes. Okay. They got the whole, you dig? Oh, they sent it to him and everything. Okay, I hope you get life, like natural life. Dougie, this is probably the hardest question, all right? Well, the hardest one for you to answer. Oh, he's trying to feel comfortable answering it. What? Why did you record what was going on? Loki, he probably to sell it on the dark web or something, or to play it back for his own gratification later. Like that's. I don't know why. Like imagine, bro went in there, had a tripod, set up a tripod, camera. You know what I'm saying? Probably lit some candles, went crazy. Oh, well, that's disgusting. I ain't even gonna lie to you. That's nasty. I can help you because you, you know we've, we've searched your, your office, haven't we? You can't help him. We've seized your office. And we've downloaded computers. I don't know, David, whether certain things in your life have given you the opportunity to do it. Can you see where I'm coming from? That could be a particular shift. Or it could be a particular day when the mortuary closes early. Um, 
it could be something else in your personal life that allows you to to do that or, or there may not be a, a sequence it might just be when one of the females enters the mortuary and what was your what was your thought process about your offending David how would you how would you um, decide that a particular offence would occur I mean, you know, is it? I didn't have a Upon learning of this horrific news, David's wife... Bro, no. Oh, he had a wife, too? He knew exactly. He knew the answer to all of them questions. It's just too embarrassing to answer. Upon learning of this horrific news, David's wife left him. She was, of course, also distraught at what he had done. That's got to be hard on her. Imagine being somebody's wife who would regularly take pleasure in doing dead bodies before you. No offense, but it's nothing that she could have done about it. It's something that's going on in his head, but like, imagine what's going through her mind, though. That he didn't, also distraught at what he had done. Those who knew David stated that he didn't seem like the kind of person to do such a thing. They described him as a normal and quiet person. David initially denied the murders on the grounds of diminished responsibility before unexpectedly changing his plea to guilty on the fourth day of his trial. He pleaded guilty to murdering Caroline and Wendy, as well as 51 other offences, including 44 charges relating to 78 victims in the mortuaries between 2008 and November. Oh, so he had re repeat victims? November of 2020. David was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. About time! That's the first time I ever heard that out of the UK. Life without the possibility of parole. That's W. W conviction. The systematic nature of the way you had recorded your offending can be illustrated by reference to one portable hard drive, exhibit KH83. That contained three folders, Necrolord, Register and Deadly. Some of the content could not be accessed. Within the deadly was a subfolder titled Deadliest. This also contained subfolders. One of the subfolders titled 00 Best Yet contained a further 36 folders. Of these, 27 were titled using a number then a woman's name, and then a further number. Within these folders, you stored images of use interfering with the corpses of women and girls. It is by looking at such images, comparing the creation dates and other records with the mortuary logbook. Like the judge and everybody involved not discussed it? Like, how do you go on? Like, how do you get past stuff like this as a, as a judge? Books and other evidence that the identities of the 91 named <sighs> victims were found. It would be wrong to name any victim, and it is unnecessary to do so. Among those you abused were women who had led fulfilling and rich lives. They were the best. One had flown across the Atlantic in a propeller plane via Iceland. Another was a talented skier. One had worked at Bletchley Park during World War II. Many had long... One worked at Bletchley Park during World War II. Oh yeah, they did say there were some 90-year-olds in there. ...long and happy marriages. A number worked hard in professions such as t or in the NHS caring for others and looking after the interests of their students, clients and patients. All had families that they nurtured and loved. Some spent the last part of their lives in suffering, whether through disease or old age, but they didn't lose their dignity until you decided to take it from them. At the time of the sentence... Insane. 
sentencing, 81 of the mortuary victims had been identified. However, due to difficulties in identifying all of the corpses he violated, and fearing there may have been hundreds of others going back to when David's hospital employment record began, Kent Police set up a call centre at the conclusion of the trial to deal with any public concerns. The government also announced a public inquiry, while the NHS England ordered all hospital staff to review their security. In December of 2022, he pleaded guilty to essaying the bodies of 23 more women, bringing the total of mortuary victims to 101. For this, four further years were added on to his sentence. As of right now, no evidence has been found of any further victims. DS David Shipley of the Kent's police investigation team was tasked with analysing the pictures and videos. He said, David Fuller committed every intimate act that is possible to do with a human body. I swear to God, he was doing everything, foreplay and everything? There was a complete lack of emotion being shown by him. It seems to me that there was no thought whatsoever for the fact that it is someone's loved one. It's still a person. They may be dead, but they are still a person. There wasn't an ounce of humanity demonstrated by him at any point. It took David Shipley over one year to watch all of the videos that David had recorded, and I can't even imagine how disturbing this job must have been. That's what I'm saying, like, how do you go back to your everyday life after watching stuff like this? He also said that whilst reviewing these videos, he saw that David was almost caught naked and in the act. Someone had walked in, but they didn't see him. After this person left, David didn't stop. He continued to violate the victim's body. He was even violating the bodies of these women and girls up to two to three days before he was arrested. It's likely that he only stopped murdering because he had access to the mortuaries in the hospitals. After learning what happened to their beloved relatives, the families were deeply disgusted and outraged. At least one of the relatives even took their own life after learning of the despicable wow, is that deep? crimes of David. Tanya McElden died in 2017 following a battle with breast cancer, which of course would have been awful enough RIP. for the family. But years later, after suffering from the loss of Tanya, they were told the horrifying news that her body was violated by David. Tanya's son, 24-year-old Tom, has said that learning this news left him feeling anger, sadness, sickness, all rolled into one. He said whenever he saw a picture of his mother, an image of David would pop up in his mind. In Easter of 2014, a family from Paris went on a trip to the United Kingdom. Shortly after arriving, they were involved in a collision. Mary, who was just 16, and her sister Helen, who was 22, died instantly. Do you suffer from anxiety, feeling irritable or moody? So he's just upstairs, like... Or wherever he sits in the NHS in the office, like just seeing bodies come in and he's like, oh yeah. Like this that's nasty, bro. Their father Michael, who was also in the car, passed away two weeks later. The mother, Nikki, was the only survivor. Years later, she learned that her two daughters had also been violated by David. She describes what he did as demonic and satanic but says that she would very much so. also forgive him. She has said that she would like to speak to him, to tell him that he needs Christ. A woman named Jane Knight died from a stroke at the age of 100. She is believed to be David's oldest victim. Her son came forward and spoke with the media after the NHS Trust was offering 7,500 in damages with possible additional payments up to 15,000. In That's not enough recognition of the psychological damages caused to the victims' families. Jane's son said, I've been having trouble sleeping. I've been struggling to get the thought of what he did to my dear mum out of my head. I don't think any of us will get closure till we get the justice we deserve. I wonder how he doing on prison yards, man. What's going on in there? He said he was aghast when he was told of the £7,500 sum. He went on to say, I didn't want to come across as being a mercenary but I believe my mum and the families need justice, and they also need compensation. Towards the end of 2022, an agreement was reached. A lawyer representing the families of the victim said, The trust has agreed to put in place a voluntary compensation scheme, but they do not admit that they are legally liable to pay damages to the close family members of the deceased victims of David Fuller. 
Because they, they want to protect themselves, they want to protect their image. Solicitors believe that the average claim would be around twenty-five to 30,000, although a small number could get six-figure sums. The case of David Fuller is believed to be one of the worst in British legal history. The first video I made on David had a number of commenters saying that the victims were already deceased, so it didn't matter as much. Man, y'all tweaking. What are y'all talking about? They were already deceased, so it didn't matter. Whoever's commenting that, you're also a weirdo too. You're a weirdo too. <laughs> y'all don't even like comment, I'm gone.